Now, when identifying the asymptotes, um, it might be helpful, guys, for us to just kind of remember what the transformations are, just to kind of do a quick little review of the transformations. This isn't what I asked you to do. This isn't part of the problem. But I think it's just good to go back to chapter one. The first thing I would do is um, understand that you can have this reflection. Uh, you, well, we have a negative. But again, remember, we have a b and an h. So remember what we talked about for this case was to reflect this, or I'm sorry, factor out the b. Right? Because then you can accurately identify what the horizontal transformation is. You have to factor out that b. So, because we don't want to say it's left 4. We want to say it's left 2 with a horizontal compression of 2. Right? So I'm not going to, well, let's just say horizontal compression of 2. You could say that there's a reflection about the, um, over the x-axis. However, if you guys look at the reciprocal function, you notice that's an odd function. So it doesn't matter if we reflect over the x or the y-axis. It's really the same reflection. But I'll just say reflect the x-axis. And we are shifting right 2. We're shifting left 2. Okay, so let's think about the transformations. Um, let's think about the asymptotes. Per currently had a vertical asymptote. The parent graph with no transformations has a vertical asymptote at 0. If I'm shifting the graph two units to the left, my new vertical asymptote is at 2. So I can just say vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 2. Right, you're going to the left, right? So if it's at 0 and you're shifting it two units to the left, you're going left 2. Does if I stretch, if I condense or compress, is that changing my asymptote? No, right? It's only the shifting. Um, let's look at the horizontal asymptote. Well, we didn't talk about anything going up and down. We're not shifting the graph, Aaron, up or down. So therefore, my horizontal asymptote is going to remain the same at y is equal to 0. Um, all right, and the next one is to find the x-intercept. We're going to have y is equal to 0. So I'm going to replace y with 0 and write negative 1 over. Now let's go. It doesn't matter which one we use. No, but I'll just use this form, 2x plus 4. OK, now this is very, very important because this is going to happen over and over and over again. What we have is we have a rational expression equal to 0. Now again, if I need to solve for x, right? That's you, set, you, solve, you replace y with 0, and then you want to solve for x. I got to get this off the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by my denominator on both sides. And something very, very interesting happens every single time we do this with a rational expression. Whenever you multiply by the denominator in the numerator, those obviously divide to 1. Over here, anything multiplied by 0 is just 0. So I'm left with 0 equals negative 1, which is obviously a false statement, right? 0 is never going to equal negative 1. So therefore, since that creates a false statement, there is no x-intercepts. And that kind of makes sense to us as well, because remember, guys, the horizontal asymptote, this graph does not cross. Like, it approaches the horizontal. There's no x-intercept in the parent graph. And so if I'm, not, if I'm keeping the horizontal asymptote still at 0, it's still never going to cross. So that's how you can make sense of it. But the main important thing I want you to guys to realize with this is when you have a rational expression equal to 0, and you want to find the x-intercept, you're basically just to solve, you basically just set the, nu the numerator equal to 0. And you can just kind of skip all of this work and just go 0 equals numerator. And we'll do more examples of that. Uh, the last one is the y-intercept, where x is equal to 0. So in this case, you're just going to replace x with 0. And you guys can see we get y equals negative 1 fourth. And again, another trick for this is anytime you plug in 0, that's going to be 0, right? So it's really always just going to be the constant over the constant. You don't really need to like think too much about this. It's just constant over constant, because anything with an x just goes to 0, right? So now we've identified the asymptotes and the intercepts. All right. So what I'm going to do for each and every one of these problems is check 